Now we're going to be looking at chirality um, and stereocenters, so some types of isomers. Right? Um, so in terms of chirality, uh, what does that mean? So, so for a molecule to be chiral, it has to have four unique groups around it. Okay? So when we look at these two molecules around here, um, and so one of these is chiral, one of these is achiral, so it means not chiral. Okay? Um, so if, which one has four unique groups? Well, this one has a hydrogen, ethyl, methyl, and chlorine. So that's going to be chiral, okay? the four unique groups. And in this one, we have two methyls, so this is going to be achiral. Okay? So it should be pretty simple to uh, distinguish between chiral and achiral. Um, and if something is chiral, then it can have some sort of absolute configuration, and we'll see that next. So absolute configuration, what does that mean? It's what we say R or S, a molecule is R or S. And so um, hopefully you guys remember how you did this um, during uh, classes, you know, when you took OCHEM. Uh, but if not, here's a simple way that you guys can do it. It, it can be kind of tricky uh, to, to kind of comprehend at first, but if you understand it, you'll never have a problem with any type of molecule that you're given. You know, it'd be very, very simple. You'll never make mistakes. Right? Um, so the rules go like this. So you find the, the chiral carbon, right? and then you assign priority, um, and it's based on molecular weight. Right? And one thing to keep note of is that if you have a, a carbonyl carbon like that, right, it's going to be treated with two O's. Okay? So that will come into play um, you know, when you're comparing a C uh, OH versus a C double bond O. The C double bond O is going to have a higher priority. Okay? So that will come to play later. Um, and then what I do, which um, some people may, some people don't like to do this, is convert it into a Fischer projection. Okay? The one thing I like about that is the fact that because you're converting it into a Fischer projection, if you know how to convert it to a Fischer projection and then read the uh, absolute configuration based on that uh, Fischer projection, you have no problem if they just gave you a Fischer projection straight off the bat. Right, so you, you kind of kill two birds with, with one stone. Because some people have difficulty because they don't ever deal with Fischer projections. When they see one, they don't know how to read it. Right? Um, and the final thing is, uh, based on these numbering of the priority, is it going to be R or is it going to be S? Right? Um, and we'll see that if, it's, if the H is on the horizontal of the Fischer projection, for example, if the H is here, then it's going to be the inverse of that. Okay, so counterclockwise is going to be R and clockwise is going to be S. And so it sounds kind of confusing right now, but don't worry, it's very, very simple. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just find the chiral carbon. Okay, so all these all are achiral because they have two hydrogens from them. So this is going to be a chiral carbon. Okay, so that's step number one. So assign priority. Okay, so I'm going to redraw this simply like that. That's our first step. Just redraw it so it's very simple. All we're going to do is add numbers. So obviously H is going to be the last of the priority. Okay? Um, and bromine is going to be the first one because it's the heaviest. Uh, and then this long chain is going to be number two. And this uh, methyl is going to be number three. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to convert this into a Fischer projection. Um, and so with Fischer projections, we have to just pretty much flatten it. All right. So a good way to think about this is, this is called the little man technique. I mean, some of you guys may have learned it, maybe not. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to have this little man, um, and what he's end, uh, eventually going to look like is he's going to look like that. Okay. So he's going to have in his left hand and his in right hand, and this is going to be his left hand, and this is going to be his right hand. And you're going to see what was in his right hand, what was in his left hand. So if you can imagine, you split this molecule uh, straight down the center like that. So in the back, is going to be his right hand, right? Because he's not deformed, he's not going to have his right hand crisscross like that. It's just going to be normal like that. So his right hand is going to be into the board, and his left hand is going to be out of the board. All right? So in that case, well, this number two is out of the board. All right? So number two is going to be in his left hand. So we can put that right here, okay? And number one is going to be into the board, and it's going to be in his right hand, okay? What was at his feet? Well, at his feet was number three, and at his head was number four, okay? So if we redraw this uh, Fischer projection without the head and without the arms and stuff like that, it's going to look like that, okay? So simple. It, it looks exactly like a Fischer projection. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to say is it clockwise or is it counterclockwise? The first thing you want to know is is 
um, is the last one. So I shouldn't say no, the hydrogen, I should actually say number four, okay? is number four on the horizontal. And what I mean by that is the last uh, of the priorities. And generally hydrogen is always gonna be the last one, that's why I said H. But what if it didn't have a hydrogen? Then we just deal with number four, okay? So the last priority um, group. Is it on the horizontal? The answer is no. So we're not gonna invert anything. We're just gonna deal with this. R is gonna be clockwise, S is gonna be counterclockwise. So what we do is, well one, two, three. So that goes like this. And is that, that's counterclockwise. So this is gonna be S, okay? Um, so you know, play around with this a little bit. Maybe if you guys have a molecule or those model kits, you can kind of visualize it better. Um, but yeah, you know, this will take practice. If you have a better way of doing it and you're comfortable with doing it, stick to that. Don't don't try to mess with things. If things are already working currently, just stick to that. And if you know how to do R versus S, just go with what you already know. So the next thing we're going to be looking at um, is E versus Z. And these are uh, part of the same geometric isomers that R and S are. Uh, but E versus Z is specific for double bonds, okay? So you can't assign E versus Z for um, a tetrahedral molecule, something that has uh, four, four groups coming out of each carbon. All right, so this is specific to double bonds. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say that, well, the first thing we're going to do is assign the same type of rule. So the first thing we're going to do is assign the priority. And we're just going to divide them in half. All right? So divide them in half and assign priorities based on that. So remember, if I don't write anything, that's going to be an H. Okay? So always remember that for the MCAT. Um, and just assign the priorities. First you look at the left side, then you do the right side. So do them individually, and one or two. So is it a one or is it a two? Because remember, double bonds only going to have two, two um, substituents on each side. So obviously, the, carbons, um, the methyl group is going to be number one, hydrogen is number two, um, likewise, one and two. One and two, one and two, okay? So assign it one or two, okay? Uh, based on the molecular weight like we saw before, okay? Now, this, that part's easy. Now, all we need to say is are they on the same side or on the opposite side? So is one going to be on the same side or opposite side? So one are going to be opposite because they're, you know, and in this case, one is going to be on the same side. So this is the same and this is the opposite, all right? So... This is going to be Z and this is going to be E. If they're on the same side, if the numbers are both on the same side, it's going to be Z. If they're on the opposite side, it's going to be E. Okay? And one way you can remember this is on the same side. Um, sounds kind of corny, but this is how I always remembered it. My teachers told me that um, in class during school. Um, and I never forget that. And I'll, I think that mnemonics will save you on the MCAT. Knowing as many mnemonics will cut down on what you have to memorize. So on the same side. So Z is on the same side, okay? So ones are on the same side, and on this side, they're opposite, okay? So E versus Z.